maybe we can talk a little bit about uh, the role that fishing has played in your life uh, and, and what it's always been for you in the different phases of your life. You know, for me, fishing is all about uh, my whole nature and culture growing up in BC. I've, uh, you know, my earliest memories at the age of about three with my dad and my grandpa and my uncle and cousins just out fishing uh, and spending time, spending mm -hmm. time with people that you care about. And, and you're always on an adventure. There's always something happening around the idea of fishing. You have to, you know, you're setting your goals, you're preparing, you're imagining what it's going to be like. The anticipation is always there. And then there is actually the difference between what it might be like and actually how it is. And, and the sometimes, stories that happen Yeah, later? the big fish that never really happens. You know, <laughs> oh yeah, it's going to be so big. And then, you know, your little one or nothing at all. And, and the big ones that get away. After your accident, I mean, did you ever think that you wouldn't be able to fish again? Or how did you get involved in fishing? Because it's continued to be a huge part of your life and who you True. are. You you know, when I actually had my accident, I was hitchhiking home from a fishing trip with my buddy Don Alder, who I think you guys know. Yeah. He's, a, he's a, just a phenomenal guy and one of the most brilliant musicians that I can ever imagine. And and uh, we were just in the back of a pickup truck and the guy crashed. And so that fishing adventure created an incredible change in my life. Uh, you know, one of the greatest opportunities for me. Um, at the time, I wouldn't have imagined that. but. It also was a vehicle for me to realize that I could still be the same person after my injury. Getting back into fishing again, recognizing that I could still be with my family and friends and out in the water yeah. doing the things I loved. I thought, well, if I can do it in that environment, I could do it in sport or I could do it in business or in uh, making a difference in society. And, and it's uh, been deeply ingrained in my nature and my culture. And when you get so connected to it, you also want to give something back. Mm -hmm. And that's what led me to conservation because in order for a sustainable world, we can't just take and disregard the impact that we might have. We have to also um, give and we have to also make sure there are limits to um, that balance and uh, always try to find you know the best balance we can along the way. Yeah, well, and you see these lines running through your life uh, from an outsider perspective anyway, you know, the, uh, the technology, the interest, the always wanting to learn uh, and pushing things things forward a little bit, whether it's your work with the Rick Hansen Foundation or in Sturgeon Conservation, you know, all these things, it's that mix of technology, uh, you know, making lives better, making environments better, all these things. And of course, for me, uh, then how do I figure out how to do the things I love in the things that I work yeah. at? And <clears throat> I've been able to introduce a, a fundraising event up in the Langara Islands and the Queen Charlotte Islands. Uh, um, it's called uh, the Rick Hansen Fishing Challenge and uh, Langara Lodge has been our host up there. We have six the corporate folks up there and we raise um, oh, $150,000 a year. We've raised over a million dollars to date up there and built some incredible friendships that have helped us make a, an even bigger difference across the country and around the world. And so fishing has had, a, had another impact on my life um, and, and has really helped assist me on my dream to one day find a cure and in the meantime to make communities accessible for people. Do you so get other people in wheelchairs out fishing sometimes? That Probably the greatest experience for me was when we went up to Langara and was getting a guy named Rob Dunfield out. Uh, uh, Rob yeah. was a buddy of mine who who uh, was injured uh, at the age of about 18, 19, high lesion quadriplegic like Christopher Reeve. And one day we were having coffee and talking about getting involved in a program and, and then we talked about fishing and his eyes lit up and I said, so you like to fish? And he goes, oh, he says, I love fishing. And I said, well, when's the last time you were out there? And he goes, come on, Rick, you know, I can't even move my hands. Right. If you want to fish, we can figure out a way to make it happen. And he goes, yeah, you think so? And I go, why not? So we, we managed you to get a, anything stop you. Why yeah. not? So we got a team together and they adapted the sip and puff uh, control to an electric fishing reel. We got a, a rod holder and uh, and then we ended up testing it out and it turned out that we had a, a way where he could fish independently and uh, reeling really his own fish. That must have been an amazing day for him to do and that. And we got him out and he caught he caught four spring salmon. He outfished me. He got four spring salmon <laughs> like that. That's not hard to do though. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and and, and I'm and his, his smile was as big as Texas, and uh, and and he did. He just had such a huge impact on so many people around him oh, yeah. that made them realize anything's possible. And for him, the biggest lesson was, you know. I have to be careful about the artificial constraints I put in myself and in my life and not to make any assumptions because if I really want to do something bad enough I can find a way to do it. And, and Rob was a pioneer on that fishing adventure because 
it's now inspiring a lot of other people with disabilities to say, well, I can do it too. Yeah, and exactly. they're knocking on doors and saying, why can't I get out into the outdoors and hike or camp or fish or sail. Um, you know, sail or scuba dive or whatever. forget about sometimes. I think when they think of Rick Hansen, they think about uh, spinal cord, cord research and, and the science behind that, but also the drive that you guys make towards accessibility and making sure that all these options are available for yeah. people, uh, regardless of what the limitations might be. And sometimes a small adaptation, getting the right experts together to combine a customized solution for someone can have the biggest impact in the world. And uh, you don't have to wait for a cure to happen in order to be whole as a human being, mm. you get a chance to just go for it in spite of these obstacles. You look at what you can do. and Especially uh, with technology, the way we have it now, as you explained with the sip and puff technology, mm. I mean, that wouldn't have been possible. Yeah. Right. Before. Yeah, and, and you know you can make uh, easy changes to boats. Uh, you can take out a seat. You can create a davit system to lift someone up out off of a wharf and into a boat. Um, you know, a lift or a ramp. Uh, you know, you can adapt even a, a reel so you can put a piece of Velcro onto uh, a hand that has maybe limited grasping power and still be able to reel in the fish yourself. Uh, there's all kinds of incredible and innovative adaptations where you can apply existing technology to liberate and uh, to get on with life. Well, and then all the, you know, the, the spinal cord research stuff too. You know, what is that? I was reading in the in the material before it came out that 90% uh, of what they know has been discovered in the last, you know, really finite number of years, 10 to 15 years. I can't remember what it was exactly. It's true. There's been a huge advanced uh, progress in that area. But, you know, if you followed the recent news, uh, Kevin Everett, Kevin Everett. The, the football player mm -hmm. who was injured recently, um, it's that best practice protocol of being able to get out onto the Field immediately, treat him properly, cool down the spinal cord, and then amazing. get him body back. I mean, that's probably why he's had such incredible recovery and uh, has more hope as a result of yeah. that progress. Well, and that idea of cooling down the whole system yeah. so it reduces the swelling, I mean, it sounds like it's going to. Uh, completely changed this young man's for, uh, prognosis for his future. True, and and of course, if fishing can be a way where we can introduce all kinds of people who can understand spinal cord injury and then become part of that mission to support brilliant researchers mm -hmm. that will one day find a cure, um, you know, to me that's a, that's a competitive advantage it we have. Both those great sides no. together yeah. for Okay, you. back to the fishing. I set out today saying I'd never caught a fish before. <laughs> Fantastic. about the fish that I caught. It was it a big one? Did that, I do all right? That was a beautiful fish, Shona. I tell you, you did an awesome job, and your technique was very good. I had some good coaching. And you had, you had you had some good teamwork there. You know, teamwork great support. I didn't really do much. I was just sort of pretending to lift. But it was harder than I thought it would be. Yeah, they're amazing. They're powerful fish. They, they really are. are. And and of course, once you've worked hard, you know you, you can see how that fish. You know, was able to come in and uh, and then cooperate with you guys as you 
very able cooperative. to yeah. measure. And then, you know, you saw it swim, swim away and it was incredibly healthy. Well, it's cool so. and it was one that wasn't tagged as well. You know, you yeah. can see the whole process. Is and now you'll be able to take that tag if you want and uh, and you can check in uh, once a year and say, okay, hey, Rick, uh, where's my fish? Uh, is my fish showing up at all? <laughs> Anybody else caught my fish? And then, well, that, that took us about uh, 10 or 15 minutes yeah. having the rods in the water, so I figured we should go back out. And, I think so. Yeah, we're going to get you a workout now, mate. Uh, no, Your turn. I'm good. I'll help you. <laughs> I got one! Oh! <laughs> the reason I ever pulled that one off. Mike, that was, Mike, that was just a chest, and just so you know, you failed oh, I miserably. I failed, I know. He's mad at the sturgeon. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's heavy. 